Good morning beauties. I know it's been a little while, but we are back with another kerosene heater video. Today we're going to talk about kerosene fuel, where you can get it, differences between gas station and buying it prepackaged can, uh, things along that line. So if you're new here, take a second and hit that subscribe button and hit the like button and let's get started talking about fuel for this bad boy here. So where do you buy kerosene? There are three places that you can typically purchase it from. Place number one is through a gas station. Place number two is through retail stores. And place number three is through a fuel delivery supplier. Corey and I, last year, we played around with the retail stores. And the biggest lesson that we learned is that it is two to three times more expensive to buy prepackaged five gallon drums from the retail stores than it is from the gas stations. The bonus to buying from retail stores is that it's already prepackaged. It comes with a seal on it, and I'm gonna show you that here real quick. Retail stores uh, in here in the US, you can typically find these cans. Uh, they come in two and a half gallons to five gallon containers. And what I have found is Roll King, Tractor Supply, Lowe's and Home Depot, they all sell these cans. I'm sure there's more on the list, but those are the ones that we personally experimented with. And what I found last year is that that price on a five gallon can was ranging between $25.99 to $39.99. It really depended on what store we were going to. It was convenient, but at the same time, really pricey. So this year we decided to do something totally different and we decided to make the investment in kerosene cans, the blue containers, and we purchased all of those containers this year from Lowe's. They ranged about $20 a container, but at the end of the day, once you have it, you have it. You don't have to make that reinvestment unless you, for some reason, break the container. So once you make that investment, you're golden. And then you can just start taking it to gas stations and filling up from there. That is actually what we're currently doing. And the price on it is ranging between $3.49 a gallon to $4 a gallon. That is significantly cheaper than what we were paying last year. I think when I calculated it last year, it was about, it was averaging about maybe eight to nine dollars a gallon when it was all said and done when we were buying the five gallon cans. That's expensive. Uh, lesson learned, we transitioned over to the gas station and that's how we're doing it now. I cannot speak about the other option about having a fuel delivery provider. Uh, that is something that Corey and I have never uh, experimented with or dealt with uh, personally. If you have that information, I'd be interested to know, you know, drop a message in the comments and uh, yeah, let me know if you've ever dealt with a, a, a kerosene provider, delivery provider. You know, and uh, I'd be really interested to see, you know, what other people pay for that service. So let's talk about kerosene quality here for a second. If you purchase kerosene from the retail stores, the K1 dye free, additive free kerosene that typically comes in two and a half to five gallon containers, okay, pre packaged. That kerosene, when you pour it out of the containers, it is 100% clear kerosene. And that's one of the contributing factors as to why the price tag is so high on that stuff. It is great, I will be honest. When you're burning K1 uh, dye-free, additive-free kerosene, you're not gonna get significant amounts of soot. You're not gonna get the discoloration in your walls. So clean burning. If you purchase kerosene from a gas station, the first thing you're gonna notice when you see it coming out of that pump into your kerosene can that you provided is that the color is not gonna be clear. Um, some gas stations do offer the clear K1 kerosene. In my scenario though, our gas stations don't offer that. The kerosene, when it comes out of the pump, it's actually colored. It actually looks somewhat like a pinkish red color. So how does it burn when it's got, you know, the coloration and additives in it? 
it does provide a little bit of soot, uh, more than what you would see with the clear K1 kerosene. Um, you do need to watch what's going on with your walls, just watch the discoloration, you know, anything like that, um, because it, it can do that to your home. So you need to be careful with that. Um, so far, our gas station's been really good about the quality of kerosene that they're putting in their tanks. I'm still finding that even with using this, you know, kerosene coming from gas stations that I'm not really getting a lot of coloration on my walls and I'm not really seeing a lot of soot. The other trick to that is that if you want to avoid soot and coloration in your home, start and shut down your kerosene heater outside. I really can't stress that enough. I know it sucks trying to haul it in and out of your house. I know it's heavy. I know it's just, uh, it takes so much energy doing it, but it's worth it. Totally worth it. The smell from first starting up the kerosene and the smell from shutting it down and the smoke that will come out of your unit when you're doing those two processes, you keep it out of your house when you're doing that outside. Transporting kerosene. Oh man, this is a little tricky. Corey and I, we actually will line up the kerosene cans um, and we'll basically use a tie down strap and run it through the handles and secure the kerosene cans to the to the floor mat basically and that provides shifting uh you know prevention and uh spillage all, all that stuff if you are hauling kerosene in your vehicle and you're using a blue kerosene can that you buy from the retail store i highly 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 recommend that you have some sort of rubber mat or a tarp or something in your vehicle to set those canisters on because if you don't and you had just a little bit of kerosene on the outside of those cans it's going to get into the carpeting of your vehicle and it can well potentially yeah stink up your vehicle <laughs> we've had that happen once okay we're gonna turn the camera around here and talk about this little fuel gauge here for just a minute so i have the dynaglow brand and this is what it looks like top to bottom i do have a serial no oh, this is my model number right here so if you are interested in which model i exactly have that's my model number okay and so this fuel gauge is not 100% accurate just to let you guys know this is just being used as a rough estimate as to how much kerosene is in this tank so when you have this model the kerosene actually sits down here in this tank and this is the lid uh, unscrew that you pour your kerosene in and then while you're pouring your kerosene in here you're going to be watching this gauge because this little red uh, square here, it's going to move and uh, it's going to let you know when it's pretty much full. The other way to tell if your uh, heater is full is while you're filling it in here, I can't open it right now because this thing is running, um, but you're going to see when it's about to top off. Um, so don't be overfilling it because, yeah, <laughs> you got to put this cap back on. Um, so if you notice here, my gauge actually says, it'll say 840. So on a full tank, this is the rough estimated time that I have available uh, for heat on this thing. It's approximately eight hours. Whew, it's getting hot in here. I'm right next to this thing. But uh, my tanks, we've been running these, uh, this is our second season doing this, um, their second winter. Uh, using strictly kerosene heaters and uh, I'm gonna be honest with you we get way more than eight hours on a tank so 
One of the things to keep in mind is that if you're watching that gauge, it's just an estimate. You're going to have to actually watch the flame when it's getting, you know, on the zero, on the E. And watch your flame. Your flame will tell you when it's, you know, running out. And you're going to start to smell it too. Typically, Corey and I are getting about 12 to 14 hours on one tank. Um, you're going to see on here, there's a dial right here. And if you watch my flame, right now it's on low. And if I turn my dial, the flame goes up. If I turn the dial back down, the flame goes down. This is actually... According to my manufacturer uh, instruction booklet, this flame is where it needs to be, okay? It's at the correct height. And I have it all the way turned down low, okay? That dial is not necessarily a low heat, high heat type thing, okay? You need to set, that dial is there to help you set the flame at the correct height uh, that your unit is supposed to be at, okay, for the flame. That's not to turn down the heat. It's, it's not a thermostat. And I think that's one of the biggest things people get confused about when they're using these is that it's not a thermostat. That dial is not going to cool it down. It's not going to make it hotter. You know, it, it's, it's there to have your unit functioning properly. Okay. <laughs> um, if you accidentally forget to turn the flame down, you turn it all the way on, and you forget to turn the flame down, what's gonna happen is, because it's been running on the highest flame setting the entire time, you're going to burn your tank through faster, okay? You're gonna run out of fuel faster. That's why you need to put it at the correct flame height so that it's running the way it's supposed to be and you're not just going to burn through fuel for the sake of burning through fuel um just some things to keep in mind i know there's a lot of debates when it comes to that dial and turning the flame up turning it down this is not a uh thermostat here <laughs> it is to set the flame at the correct height for you know running in your unit here okay i know this video has been a lot of me talking and yeah but hey, knowledge is power, guys. The more you know about kerosene heaters and the kerosene fuel and, you know, the do's and don'ts, the ins and outs, the more comfortable you're going to be using a kerosene heater in your home uh, to fit your heating needs or your budget needs, whatever your case may be. That's a wrap for this video. If you could do us a favor, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We greatly appreciate you and it helps push the information out to others who are looking for it. And we will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.